<sighs> Hi. <laughs> this was our Cigar Fest 2010. Wow. It was... Met a lot of great people. I mean, it, it was just... A lot of work. A lot of work. Really tired. Really nice to sit here in the... Well, kind of nice to sit in these floral chairs. Um, it's not Jason's house. Yeah. It'd be, <laughs> you know... It, it would have been a lot nicer at Jason's house. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah. Yeah. How do you think it went? I mean... You're you're the professional on all this. This, you know, as everybody should know by now, this is my first one. I've never been to one before. Well, um, this is my third, uh, second year as press, and you actually noticed on the press badge that it said three to seven. Yeah. Um, so apparently we weren't supposed to be in early, although we were. Uh, <laughs> we actually got onto the show floor. I guess it was about an hour before the show opened. Uh, we needed to go find the event coordinator to get our, our press passes, and when we did that, we just kind of turned around and walked right back onto the show floor and stayed there. I mean, I, I kind of figured they would throw us out, so I was intentionally staying away from event staff, uh, and I kept hanging around people that I knew. Uh, we talked to Jose Blanco for a little while, Eddie Ortega, Jose Oliva, uh, Sam Lucia, um, Gene Arganiz, and uh, we, were, we were just kind of mingling around these people so that we wouldn't get thrown out. And basically, I, I just didn't want to have to go stand out in the line. Uh, it was just a massive line, especially by the time we got our tickets. I mean, we would have been at the end of it, and we were inside. I wasn't about to leave without being thrown out. <laughs> so uh, so we hung around, and, you know, when the event started, we were we were in there. We actually got some recording of uh, the first person going through the door, which was it was kind of funny because we were hanging out with him the, the night before. <laughs> And uh, and little did I know, you know, I'm walking around and our press badge says 3 p.m. So we were in there like four hours before we were supposed to be. And um, which, which, by the way, if anybody from CI is watching this, is stupid. <laughs> I mean, it was great. I mean, when we got in there, like you said, we were in there an hour early. We had time to actually talk to people, you know, get some reaction from them before you start blasting this music that nobody could hear. Or the smoke, you, know, you might see in the pictures, the smoke fills the room, you know. So, I think it'd be great to start letting press in an hour before it starts. I just think that's a good idea. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, and as press, you don't get uh, the goodie bags and stuff like that. So, um, I did get a calendar. I really wanted a calendar. And, uh, who's it? Uh, DM Jones gave me, the, uh, gave me his calendar, and I was very grateful. So that was the only real freebie that I got, a aside from like a couple pockets fulls of cigars from various manufacturers that that I knew. You know, we got to sit down and talk with them for a little while, not not sit down and talk to them for a while, so to speak. Just kind of hang out in the booth and and talk over all the music and whatnot. If you're there as as like a, a customer, it's great. You know, the music's playing. Uh, you go around, you collect your cigars, talk to some of the manufacturers, get you know boxes or samplers or posters or humidors signed. And it's a, it's a good time, but when you're trying to cover the event, it's a little difficult because of all the noise. Um, you know, I wanted to do several interviews. I, you know, I talked to a few people ahead of time. We were going to try to make time to do this, and John Huber was the only one that really panned out. And the and the only reason being was because he got he got to town early. He had some time. I had some. We had some time. So right. we just we met up the day before the show, and. Uh, and we knocked that interview out and you know once everything started it was just it was always very loud so all of the footage that you'll see is you know it, it is what it is you know i'm holding the camera way over my head trying to get over the crowd this play even though i like split rock it's it's a nice quiet place it is just way too small for this event uh, three thousand people packed inside of this convention center is way way too tight I mean, the smoke, the air gets so smoky. Even now, I mean, we've been we've been out of the event for like an hour, hour and a half. I blink and my eyes feel sandy and yeah. I feel like they have a thick film on them. And of course, we're smoking another cigar. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, it, it gets really, really bad. Uh, 
you, it's it's pretty much packed shoulder to shoulder with people. Uh, you're you're uh, earlier than usual. That one big massive line started, which went from you know the front door all the way around the facility and back again. And it, it was just uh, it was really difficult to move around. Yeah, it was. It was well, and of course, <laughs> some some of the booths that got packed because everything slowed down because they had the nice looking girls there too <laughs> and that's where you found all these bottlenecks and all these lines that would just stretch way out and uh, it was it, it was really an interesting experience and if you would be there like Walt said if, if you want to be there to cover the event if you would be there to to participate and that was it you know, you could say hi to manufacturer love your cigar you know bullshit with them a little bit if you wanted to or if they had time and then you can go on your way to your next cigar you know if we wanted to get questions answered and ask you know well, what's coming up or how's this cigar doing this that it was just so loud and so many people that we we were constantly finding little spaces <laughs> at different places where we could sit down you know or sit our bags down like grab the camera out instead of the camcorder or you know Something like that, you just couldn't do it while you were walking down through that floor. It, it was just nuts. Uh, the, one of the complaints that I heard was uh, about the food. Uh, breakfast, they were saying sucked. Our breakfast sucked too. We had <laughs> breakfast here in that <laughs> resort. But uh, it was really scaled down. Last year they had this really big spread. It was great. Uh, spread out in the in the the on the show floor. This year it was sort of tucked away back in the corner. It was, what did she say it was? Fruit and... Yeah, was it bagels, bagels or muffins yeah, or something, something like, like that. that? So, so you know that seemed to be scaled back a little bit. Um, lunch was very good, or I didn't say very good, but it was it, 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 it was good. That's about the best meal we had, other than from Wawa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we had, uh, and lunch was in a really big area, uh, lots of tables. It wasn't real difficult to find a seat. It was, you know, really packed out there later on we, we were trying to go back out just to sit down and yeah. take a load off but I mean, the place was mobbed by the time the last wave of people got in um, but, but you know that's being realistic here you're not watching the video because you're considering covering the event next right. year you're, you're watching the video because you may be considering going and from that standpoint I, I think Cigar Fest is kind of fun it, it gets overcrowded and that's a big downside to it uh, you know the resorts in the area are, are pricey there are several people who are staying out of the area just because you know, hotel costs are half per night. And uh, what do you think? Do you think you get what you pay for? I mean, even the I, I think the top tier tickets sold for yeah. two hundred bucks on cigar auctioneer. Yeah, or, I, yeah, cigar auctioneer. Cigar. Yeah. <laughs> so, Oops. Uh, cigar Ooh. bid. That'll so, be a censored bleep right there. <laughs> So let's say the tickets went for two hundred bucks on right. on cigar bid. Do you think it's worth it? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it was. Uh, we we got to see what uh, some of the guys, you know, some of you guys out there showed us what you got. And I think you know, with the humidor, with uh, you know everything that was in it, uh, and then the te the shirts. Um, what was it? If if you forty bucks or something for a shirt, and then you got even more cigars and another ashtray and I, I don't know what all was involved with that but even that even that extra expense there was well worth it for what you got you know at, at the event itself um yeah I, I and the only thing you'd have to figure like if if you're going and the main reason you're going is to get your cigars have some patience uh there are some lines that are going to get long and there's nothing you can do about it just you know, hang out with your friends, smoke, you can, you can smoke in there and smoke cigars and just take your time and, and enjoy the experience that, you know, that you get there. And, you know, even, you could hang out after that if you wanted to, but once you get, I, I don't think there's really anything else that they do other than the, the raffles. They do raffles all throughout. Oh, meet and greet, you know, you get to hang out with some of the manufacturers right. with friends. But I mean, if you, if you were just there for, you know, if, if you weren't worried about the manufacturers, you wanted your cigars and you wanted to go, you could. I mean, there's nothing that would be stopping. There's nothing left after you would get your cigars unless you had raffle tickets or wanted to meet people. 
Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, if you wanted to just yeah. blaze through the entire building and pick up all your cigars yeah. and, and leave, you, you, I mean, nothing's stopping you. Yeah, you, I don't, they, I don't you, think it's you good. Wouldn't, you wouldn't miss much in terms of events or any or anything like that right. going on. But uh, but it was a really good time. Really appreciate everyone that came up and said hi. I, yeah. I, I'm terrible with names. There were a lot of you. Very, very nice people. Really appreciate that. Thank you very, very much. Um, keep watching. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, the next thing is uh, a nub after party, which we're, we were just kind of sitting here debating on whether or not we wanted to go. I mean, I want to go because it's going to be a good time, but I don't want to go because it's, I mean, it's going to be, traffic is going to be, or not traffic, but parking, parking. is going to be a nightmare down there. Um, I don't want to get stuck in a parking lot all night. <laughs> And uh, it's really, I don't know, maybe I'm getting old, but, you know, the, <laughs> the really loud music gives me a headache. I, I feel like I can't sit down and talk to someone without yelling. Right. And it, that really takes a lot away from it. I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm old for my age or whatever, however that phrase goes. But, uh, but, I, but I really prefer this sort of setting where you can sit down, talk to people, uh, even, you know, if there's a TV or some music going... You know, where you don't feel like you have to scream, right. you know, right. to, to talk ten feet away from one another. But but down at the party, it's just really loud, and it's shoulder-to-shoulder, -shoulder packed. And everything's expensive. I mean, like, two dollars for a, a cup of soda is just... I mean, these are like concert prices. Yeah. Almost concert prices. Yeah. And, uh, and a cigar menu. And, uh, you know, and, and I don't think CI has anything to do with, anything to do with that. There's no control over bench warmers. The the bar that this hosted at, that it's hosted at, is are the ones that are determining the pricing and things like that. Right, right. You know, it's their staff that are doing that are running the bar, that are running you know, you know the food setup, things like that. So I think that they're just leasing the space or renting the space for you know for whatever. And uh, you know, you're, you're sort of at the mercy of the resort, and uh, and you know things like that they get kind of pricey. Yeah, they do, and uh, why? Well, I, I mean, I agree with the noise, and I mean, I like concerts, but you know, if you're going to a concert, you're going to a concert for the music, you know, to overwhelm you. Basically, you're not going to a concert to try to talk, you know, to 50 different people that are that are standing there with you, you know, to have a good time, smoke cigars, talk about you know what's going on and everything else. Uh, for an event like that where you do, you know, like Walt said, you, you want to talk to people. You don't want to just sit there and be blasted by music. It, it just gets old real fast, I think. You know, the last concert I went to, I wore earplugs. <laughs> okay, <laughs> folks. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it was a really tiny venue with you, and it's always, you know, like eight, ten foot ceilings in these small venues, incredibly loud. I wore earplugs, and it was, you know, it was fine. Because the, the time before, I, I had my ears rung for like four yeah. days. So it was like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I wore earplugs <laughs> this time I went to a concert. All righty. <laughs> but, uh, and I wasn't the only one. All, well, this, all the well, staff knew better, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, but it, but it is. I mean, I, I don't want to go to an event, you know, like like Walt said, we, you know, like the Nub event. I, I, w I would love to go to the Nub event. And the only thing that kind of makes me, holds me back is other than the fact that man it feels nice to sit down <laughs> uh, uh, other than that the noise it's it's just so damn loud at these and i mean inside that building at cigar fest i mean when you're standing you know like a manufacturer's on the other side of the table from where you are and you have to lean into each other and almost holler to hear one another that's just too loud i Maybe I'm getting old too. <laughs> yeah, I was just looking on my phone for the Twitter name of the guy that we were hanging out with. The guy that ran through the door first, Chubb something or other. Oh yeah. But uh, but we we I, I would like to go because I'd like to hang out with old pirate and this uh, Chubb something. He's got a, like a handlebar mustache. Real really nice guy. Keith and David. Keith David. Uh, They're two friends oh, who I can never remember their names. <laughs> Right. Vern, I think, is one. The other guy's name, I, I, for the life of me, I can't remember. I'm, I'm really bad with names to, be, to begin with. We're but, horrible. <laughs> but you know, and, and uh, you know, for the life of me, I, I've, I've seen this guy, like, two, maybe three years in a row. Mm. The guy that, that, uh, 
that came up to us, shook yeah. our hand. His wife was telling us yeah. about the the breakfast. I can never remember that guy's name. Really super nice guy. I would love to to sit down and have a cigar with him. Yeah. And I know he's going to be there. So I mean, it, it might be worth braving the nightmare that is parking just to do it. We've got a, a little bit of time yet, an hour, hour and a half before things get underway. But uh, but yeah, that that would be the only thing I would miss about not going is is not getting to hang out with those guys for a little bit. Yeah. But for the time being, I really appreciate being able to sit down in quiet, not in a you know a, th- a smoke thick room and just relax. Yeah, that's smooth. Like I said, this is my first one, and when when we were first in there, it was like no big deal. I mean, there was there was nothing going on. I mean, they put these big, huge fans in like uh, doorways and stuff, you know, to to help get the smoke moving. And yeah, the, the big industrial fans are like yeah, they're probably like three feet in diameter. The the big things on wheels. Yeah, and well, and at the one door they had a group of what four of them or six of them they, they had like this wooden scaffolding set up yeah. so there was two on the bottom and there was a light and then there was another row of two all in front of this one garage door and then at all the other exit doors they had a fan in front yeah. of it and it took now it, it it did good for probably an hour and a half two hours maybe until it started to get smokier and smokier and <laughs> it would have helped if they had turned some of them the other way all right. of them were blowing right. out yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah, they didn't have anything on the. There's nothing on the the roof that they could either open, you know, even like skylights that they could open, you know, because this the smoke and everything is going to rise just to try to help it get out. So it just got trapped, and it, you could just see it. I mean, just start coming down. I mean, we came in one time. And it was. I mean, it's just a haze. I mean, even taking a picture, it, it just looked like there was a haze on the picture when you took it. But uh, it it was fun. I mean, even if I want to go as press, I'd probably try to get a ticket. As long as they don't up the number of people that are going or change the place that they have it to accommodate all the people. But I liked it for my first one, so hopefully, you know, you would too, I guess. Well, before we close out, what are you smoking? What do you think? Uh, I'm smoking a La Traviata. Just the regular one this time. <laughs> And uh, I guess it tastes pretty good. It's <laughs> we've been smoking all day, all that smoke in the room. It's I mean, La Traviata's always taste good. So, but uh, yeah, the palate gets a little weary. I think a lot of it has to do with all that smoke. Well, you know, it'd be even worse if if you weren't working. Yeah, because it's difficult to hold a camera and. And a cigar at the same time because right. you're, you're you're you know you're putting your hands up to your face and you got that cigar and one of the yeah. problems that I had using an SLR I would rotate the lens and the smoke would lift off the cigar oh, and it would yeah. blind the <laughs> blind the lens and after you take about a dozen pictures and you look down at the screen and you're like oh great you know I got to take all those over again you learn that uh, that when you're when you're going to be handling the camera a lot you you don't light up a cigar so that's why we've only yeah. had like this is number five right. for the day. I know some of you are thinking, oh my god, five cigars, that's crazy. Uh, one, before we even went, because, I mean, that's kind of mandatory when I do anything. I just like to unwind and, and have a nice, relaxing cigar before before the, the hectic event starts. So that, so we did that, we had breakfast. Uh, when we got there, we lit up, and we were kind of walking around, getting our press badges, talking uh, just to, to various manufacturers and things like that. And then uh, we had, like... When we sat down, when I tried, when I uploaded the the John Huber interview, we had one in, and we had one more as we were wandering yeah. around. But for the most part, when we were quote unquote working, <laughs> we weren't smoking. Yeah, that, yeah, that's true. But uh, what are you smoking? I am smoking the La Aurora 107. Jose Blanco was kind enough to give me one, and his rep Chris Lenzo was kind enough to give me two. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. This is number two of three, and I really enjoy this cigar. I was talking to Jose about the price point, and you're probably way too far away to see it, and I forgot the remote to zoom in. But uh, what Jose was saying that the price point is like six and some change, seven and some change, and eight and some change. Uh, I you know I think that's a fair price to ask for this cigar. You know I really like it, and. Um, I would like to get some more so I could possibly do a review on it. If uh, I think Jerry might even have one in the works, so if he does, you know, maybe I'll get a couple more and we'll do uh, short ashes later on down the road. But you know, so far of 
of all of the, well, I shouldn't say all the cigars handed to me throughout the show, I, I, I enjoyed the La Traviata Maduro the most. That is a, a close second. Yeah, I like that. I, I smoked my that you know my seven earlier. This doesn't count the the Padron forty five that Jason gave me because that that was stellar. That was pre cigar fest, <laughs> so that doesn't count. That doesn't count. But I also had uh, the the uh, La Roma de Cuba by Don Papin. It had a a red band to the foot, a red cloth band. So I don't know whether it's just the the old. But being blend spruced up with a band, or if it's a little bit different, but I, I really enjoyed that one when we were just wandering around. I enjoyed that one as well. You know, the CAO Black that we had right, right after we got in was yeah, that was the first one. Was we had. it was decent. Um, I like it better than I like the CAO Gold. I'm not I'm not a big fan of that cigar. But I, I thought the Black was pretty good. Oh yeah, I thought the Black was good. I like the Gold too. I like the that big size was Double Crown or whatever. And I like that uh, Perfecto that I did the review on. But. Uh, yeah, the black was good. And that was the regular black, not the black VR. It was just the regular yeah. black. The CI. Well, I think they're both CI exclusives. Yeah, because they were given both of them out, right? But you, I don't know if you... I guess you just got one of each. I think, you know, you would have a ticket. And, you know, to explain to people that have never been there, you get a book of tickets when you come in. And then each ticket is... You know, you go to a booth and you pull the ticket out and give them the ticket. And they'll give you a cigar or... Well, with CAO, the CAO, last year, too... They give you your, your cigar with your ticket, you smoke it, you bring back the nub, and they will give you another one. They won't, they won't keep giving them to you, but if you bring back the... Th this year they, they gave out the black. So you give them your ticket, you get the CAO black, you smoke it, you wander around, you bring back the, the, the nub of the, the CAO black, they give you a CAO black VR. And then you light that up and, and continue walking around. Last year, I don't remember what it was, I think, I think the second cigar was a Brasilia. Yeah, it was fun. I think. I don't know, but I'm not sure. I really wanted to hit uh, John Huber up for some more of those La Traviata Maduros. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, uh, I, I think you're going to be excited when they come out. They're, that's something I think everybody is going to want to try. That was a really good cigar. I don't, we never asked them price point, did we? I don't know if it's going to be like the, the price of the regular La Traviata or... Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm not. I would. Have, the last time I started out as a value brand, I would assume it's going to stay a value brand. Yeah, that's so. That's what I was thinking too. I mean, the Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper may be a little bit more expensive, but uh, I don't think it's going to be huge. I, I don't yeah. think it's going to be like a dollar more. Yeah, you know, it might be a few more cents, but but that's all we got for you. Yeah, pretty much. It's. I really don't know. What else to say other than CI? Please turn the sound down. <laughs> and please change the press tickets to less in at regular yeah. time. Well, like I said, I, I still think... You know what? I, I, I don't have my press ticket from last year, but I'd have to, if I did, I would love to look at it and see... What time it said. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. And I don't even understand what the 3 o'clock thing is for. I mean, they... That's when one of... That's, I think oh, that's, that's the Oh, that's the general group. admission, I guess. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, yeah, it's, you know... For something like this, if, if you want to get it covered, it, it's a lot easier to do it before everything starts for us than it is while it's going on. It's nice to be there while it's going on. Like you said, you know, we got the shots of the people coming in the door, and which was really not as dramatic as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> well, what well, kind of laughed at me? I was expecting like a mob coming running through the door and boop, 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 one guy. Huh? Where's everybody else? You know, thirty seconds later, we yeah, trip us through. Yeah, it and was, then the pace yeah. picked up, but yeah, it was never that swarm like I was expecting. You know, and screaming and hollering. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is that concludes our cigar fest uh, 2010 wrap up. Uh, if, you know, if we go to this nub thing, we may do or nub cane party. Maybe we'll do a video about that, but probably not. I mean, I don't know, I don't know that it's really worth discussing the party, you know, whether or not the party was worth it, but eh. not unless I want to gripe some more about, you know, the, the parking situation down there. But uh, yeah, I would say any of the parties now, just in my point of view, if you're a drinker, if you, if you like to drink, and you don't mind loud music, and that's the main reason you're going, you'll have a blast. You know, if, if it's like 
you would like a night out on the town or you know like going to a bar for a night or something like that that'd be perfect it was just uh i know i would strongly recommend carpooling yeah oh yeah yeah i mean but, and i'm not and or walking if you stay in the if you stay in split rock you might just be able to walk there some of them are pretty far yeah some of them are far but um but you know i'm not i'm not like griping because you know it took us a couple of minutes to find a parking spot i mean I mean, it, it was a situation where we were almost stuck in a parking lot until, until you know, whoever owned those yeah. vehicles was at the at the mercy and, and left. Yeah, because cause people would just park it shut. I, I mean, everywhere. I mean, it, you, when when you have three thousand people in a, right. in a space that that's not built to accommodate those that type of number for vehicles, you know, people find some really creative parking spaces, and it makes moving around very difficult so if you were coming down here with a group of friends all of you leave your cars one place pile it on into one car and drive down there and you'll save yourself a big headache yeah it's uh it can get great now cigar fest wasn't bad i don't think for parking no it's just that the bench warmers uh, sandbar is right you know it's it's a smaller facility and there's other businesses in the area or other you know, I think there's a restaurant and, and a couple of other things right there in that little strip. So, you know, you've got parking for all that. and just yeah. They just don't have enough. There's just not enough parking there. And, well, we actually went up through the woods, I guess, and came out on the side street where people were still parked. And it, it turned it into a one-way street, basically. If, if you were coming down, there was nobody else coming up. <laughs> And it's, it, I mean, it and can get dangerous. Were, yeah, if you pulled up that street, I don't know what you were going to do because there was no way to turn around. Yeah. You were going to have to back back down the street. Or try to fit into that tiny little spot that we got out of. Yeah, oh, God. But uh, there you have it. That is uh, Cigar Fest 2010, and my phone is ringing. He's Perfect a guy. <laughs> All right. That's Keith. Hello.